And it's lights out. Welcome to the pit wall, our fantasy Formula One podcast. It is so great to be back. I'm your host, Jay Jack. And joining me this evening is my bro, Dominic. And my father, Dr. David Kessler. Hey. Hi, everybody. And last but not least is our great friend, Paula. High five from above. And high five from the side. And high five from diagonal. Good job. Awesome. Let's kick it on over to our race results. There was two crazy things that happened in this race that caught some people off guard. The first has to do with grid penalty positions. Botas before qualifying and then Sonoda after qualifying were awarded three grid spot penalties. Why this is important for your fantasy team is because you get points for qualifying and you get points for the race. Now, the race positions gained and lost bonus points are not based off of your quality, but off your starting grid position. So that means Botas qualifying second place gets to keep his nine points. And because he now starts three places back, he gets two points for every time he passes somebody. And so while on our chart, it says that he Q2 and he dropped one, you have to keep in mind that our graph does not show starting grid positions so he did not start the race in second position the other thing to note it seems that the top 10 had this spread someone like signs started outside of the top 10 was able to get more points than perez or norris because he was able to gain so many positions if you get at least five overtakes 10 points and so because of his overtake signs was able to get maximum bonus points and that's why he ended up performing better than norris or perez but Paul you've noticed that Norris is usually the guy who's gaining positions and getting those extra points. Norris, who's had a great points to cost ratio. Let's put him up right up there with Paris, with Bota sometimes. Someone like Norris, who consistently gains positions in a race, can get you just as many points. Norris is the only one to score championship points every single race this season. And as you pointed out, he's been usually gaining positions. So in fantasy, that's really good. Now, in this case, it actually hurt Norris that Botas got his grid penalty because he and Perez passed Norris. That is negative four points. Now on to our dynamic pricing report few drivers and a handful of teams that lost their streak progression this race. This is the disparity we're starting to notice now between Red Bull, which seems to be the clear constructor, and Ferrari. Perez, in the last two weeks, has raised by half a million. Leclerc, in the last two weeks, has gone negative 0.6 million. Signs, interesting enough, as we highlighted, he actually got a decent amount of points, highest compared to Leclerc, Perez, and Norris. However, he got a 3% pick drop. And so that is going to be interesting to see. Is there a rebound with the Ferraris heading to this next race if we can see that the race pace is pretty strong? Now, Ferrari, as a constructor, in the last two weeks, has lost nearly a million 0.9 million they've lost in team value. They're right now neck and neck back to where McLaren is about the same cost. I want to kick it over to the Google Sheet right here so that we can see in the link in the description, you go over to the infographics tab and under the price tracker column for each team, you see that Ferrari's value has gone up and then down and then up again and then down again. It seems that Ferrari has great potential, but as soon as they burn you, people don't like it. Whereas if you scroll down to McLaren over the course of the season. Ricardo just being a completely inconsistent, you really can't rely on him. That makes trade-off between McLaren and Ferrari really hard to make for most people, especially hmm. given that Ferrari was pretty consistent right up until now. The trade-off has actually become even more apparent. Perez suddenly doing really good. You kind of have to take Red Bull. You're going to lose so many points if you decide to go with Ferrari or McLaren to try to get a more expensive driver. There was a week where I switched out Red Bull for Ferrari three weeks ago. I was doing exactly what you said, picking up a more expensive driver with the cost reduction. And as soon as that race was over, I immediately switched back to Red Bull. The Ferraris had severely underperformed to my expectations. It seems like every week is becoming more clear if you are not taking the red bull chances are you're leaving points on the table as perez and verstappen continue to impress i would expect that more people will try to slot them in that would potentially give us more ties more teams that look similar to each other it seems like there's an amalgamation a uh, meta that is building as everyone's going to end up with the same thing 
as I was on my way home, I tweeted this out almost home after being gone two weeks. What did I miss in today's race? And Slivo responded, and they could not have said it any better. Max outclassing everyone, Hamilton not being able to keep up with the max, and solid effort from Perez nearly making the two stop work, finishing 0.5 behind Botas. Solid drive from Lando, amazing recovery for Leclerc, and sad disappointment for Ricardo. Sad face. Our sister decided to join us for this race. It was one of the benefits of us all being together. And she was like, Verstappen's in the lead and nobody's even close to her. That's really boring. I was like, no, no, no. Shh, shh. No, just let us have this. Okay. <laughs> you haven't been watching for years. You do not know the horrors of Mercedes. Okay. If this is what it takes, then I am cool with that. It was interesting. She took to Norris so fast. She's like, I don't even know who this guy is, but I like that guy and I want to see him do well. And I'm like, yeah, everybody I know is also wanting to see him do well, but it's just interesting to see the perspective of somebody who's not really in Formula One. There is some charm to the race. Now, Paula, I think you also had a reaction. What do, what do you think it is about Norris that People just gravitate towards. I think he's just a great personality. He's young. He's gritty. We follow him on Twitch. We follow him on Instagram. He brings, like, I think a different energy than the other drivers. He clearly takes it very, very seriously, but he doesn't shy away from joking around and playing with the interviewers and just getting out there and giving it your all, but also enjoying it and understanding, like, how lucky he is to be in the position that he is. We saw some interesting midfield battle action. Let's start with Russell. Because of Sonoda and because of Botas getting those three grid place penalties and reshuffling things, he qualified 11th. And now Russell starts the race, not just in 10th, but suddenly we see him breathing down Alonzo's neck to potentially get seventh place. And then treble struck. Paolo, how did you feel about Russell going into the pit stops and then having to retire like a couple laps later? I really thought that he was going to get point for Williams for the first time. I think we would have all been ecstatic to see that happen. I mean, there wasn't much he could do, so heartbreaking. I was excited too. I put him on my fantasy team and I thought he was really going to points, but unfortunately he didn't. I was absolutely ready to make him my driver of the day two weeks in a row. It was easy. And then he just wasn't in the race anymore. <laughs> yeah, I believe it was like what maybe like a hydraulics issue or something that was starting to affect his car. So then they wanted him to push really hard to get a two stop strategy. That was a big rip. But for a hot minute there, I was regretting not having Russell on my fantasy team. And once he retired, then I was like, and this is why you stick with Mick Schumacher. As much as Russell is really amazing, the car does not seem to have the reliability that the Haas does. And that has been keeping Russell from getting tons of points in fantasy. I just hope it, this doesn't become a trend because every Friday they're showing great praise during practice. This is probably the best that we've seen Williams and they seem to be able to maintain it during quality and then race day comes and it just all goes downhill. Anticlimactic for the last couple weeks. And it's time for It's in the Numbers, the section where Dad will give you a sequence of numbers, and it is up to you to figure out what he was thinking. Dad, take it away. What are we getting this week? Alfonso did a great job last week. He stated it was max, and he got 10 points for the first in qualifying, 25 for first in racing, and five for the fastest lap. Congratulations. So this week, we have number five, number 21.2. 219, 18, and 20.936. What is the name of the team? The hint is about the Stereo Grand Prix on race day. If you can figure out what those numbers mean and you are bold enough to put it in the comments, go ahead. If you are the first person to get it correct, we will give you a shout out. Good luck to you and may the numbers be in your favor. Now on to the news. Three major news items, and they all pertain to racetracks. Turkey is back with Singapore being removed. The October 3rd slot is now being filled with Turkey. There were some COVID restrictions that were going to keep it from happening earlier, but they believe when it gets to October, Turkey should now be safe for all the teams to still be there. Bro, you are so excited. Tell us, what are you feeling? What are you thinking? What do you expect? Thanksgiving is coming early this year, baby. Ooh. Go, 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 go. Yeah, very excited. I was a little bummed when they said it was going to be taken off. It's such a great race to watch. So I'm really excited that they'll be able to do it again. Next news comes with the Russian Grand Prix. 
Starting in 2023, it will no longer be at Sochi. It will now be at St. Petersburg, and they will be building a new track. Bro, how do you feel about Sochi being removed in favor of a new track? I feel like not too many people are going to miss it. There is generally <laughs> it being one of the most boring races in the season. So obviously we won't know how the new one compares until we get to see it. You would have to do something very wrong for this not to be an improvement in some way. What I like about it is the fact that they're going to make it such that they can have 10 different configurations so they could have multiple race tracks in the same area. Which then now brings us to our third one. Abu Dhabi, the last race of the year, is notorious for having some features that do not allow for overtaking and three huge sections are now going to be overhauled in time for the last race this year. One of them is getting rid of a chicane before you go into a kern and you just widen that section. Another section, which was a series of corners, they're going to be smoothed out so they're faster. Another one was a braking zone, and that will now be a big winding turn with, with actual banking. People like to get upset at Herman Tilke for designing a lot of these tracks because he has certain things that he likes to do and they feel like it's not good enough. What I think is important is you design the track, then you see how it works for a couple seasons, then you upgrade the track. So you get to keep the iconic parts and then still improve the sections that needed to be smoothed out. I don't believe if this season was as close as it was, Abu Dhabi would be getting changed. I think it's great that we're starting to get into the era where racetracks are designing and re-upgrading their layouts. It's now time for the orc. Shout out to our number one team in the orc. Gianluca has been a part of the pit crew since virtually the beginning. And he has desperately wanted to be on the top step of the podium. And he's not even been on the podium yet, but he's been messaging, man, so close this week. I'll get there next time. And he changed the name of his team as soon as he found out he was going to win to finally the Italian anthem. So we're going to be able to hear the Italian anthem for the very first time this season at the podium ceremony at the end. Let me do a plug for our leagues. Each race, I make an orc or a one race challenge. It's a single entry opportunity. If you score the top three, you have the opportunity to be on a podium graphic that will be put at the end of this podcast. Two things to keep in mind. The first is mega driving points are not included. You can use them for your other leagues, but the base is what we will take. The second thing is, if there is a tie in points, the tiebreaker goes to the lowest valued team. Now, what we're going to discuss here, actually, is that we had two teams of the whole 20 that tied for third place. Both had the same amount of value. And so we're going to try to squeeze them on the podium. So just be aware, the more people you tie in points and value means the smaller your team is going to be on the podium. You want to look big and proud. You want your flag on the top. Continue doing good work. Work. Link in the description below is the code for this next race. It's only one week away. This is where you're going to be able to join into your team. And if I get at least 10 entrants, I can upload a custom graphic. That's what I like. Dominic, how do you feel about hearing the Italian national anthem? This brings me back to when Leclerc won in Monza, when the crowds were surrounding the podium and the Italian national anthem was playing. It was so hype. The part where it goes, do do do, do do do. And and then all of a sudden in unison they all do 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 man let me tell you something that brought a tear to my face as an American I have a deep understanding and a great appreciation for people who love their national anthem so congratulations to you. We have not had a repeat national anthem on top of the podium this season. It's been amazing to be exposed to each country. And now to our Fat Stacks Award. This is a team that would have been on the podium. They're tied. This is a third place with 20 other drivers. But because of the tiebreaker rules, they didn't have the lowest value. They're not going to end up on the podium. But the Fat Stacks is awarded to the team that had the highest value. So you get a shout out. Here is a team with 109.4 million. So you get our fat stacks award appreciate that we're coming up with awards to have fan engagement and so we're trying to recognize as many teams as we can each week so please only enter one team each week so we can acknowledge as many teams as possible we're going to have this as an honor system we're glad that you want to participate a lot the more people we can recognize i think the better for everybody one team each if you would 
This now brings us to our new award. It's called the Meme Team Award. Meme Team. Meme Team. You have the ability to change the name of your team. Now, if you love the name of your team, you keep it. But if your team name makes us laugh uncontrollably, you will get a great shout out. When I first saw this team name at the Azerbaijan Grand Prix, Checo self before you wreck yourself, Max. And what happened at the Azerbaijan Grand Prix? Max was in first and wrecked himself and Checo got the victory. And it was just pure irony at its best best now there are some rules people can just make obscene jokes but that's not what we want to promote here we want it to be clean and pg for those of you that want to get a shout out maybe not because of how your team performs but by your wit and intellect you know you've got an opportunity to get a meme team award clarify we have no problem with you naming your team whatever you want that's cool if you're trying to get the recognition on the podcast just know that we would prefer it be pg otherwise do whatever you want it's cool there were some funny names that we will not mention <laughs> yes it was a really good one we won't say who it is it was a really good one but if you're trying to get the meme team just know that we have slightly higher standards here's an honorable mention actually let me bring them up i never until we thought about this idea for the meme team never actually read aloud some of these names and so this name right here for this team never made sense to me until i read it aloud and it's i was like okay that's hilarious it's just a car sound you're our honorable mention for the meme team now for the orc elite might catch many of you by surprise partly because ghastly did not perform as well as he could have nor some perez only got 22 points and so signs would have been the person to turbo would have got you 48 points norris and verstappen they're staples red bull's a staple schumacher is often seen as a staple if you're trying to get to your 100 million or less value and stroll he did a solid drive for the orc elite this is to let you know that you can still score more than most people even if you don't have more than 100 million in your team you just have to have good intuition and then some luck so we didn't get a repeat of last week where someone scored higher than the orc elite i guess that might have been a one-time wonder at this time, we're going to look forward to the next race, the third of our triple header, the Austria Grand Prix, and look up at our lineups. Bro, we'll start with you. With your team, what are you thinking? So I ended up using exactly the same team as last week. All of my drivers are trending upwards in sentiment. I'm seeing if I can't get a second good race for all of them. As it currently stands, I don't quite have any other combination that would be crazy different if I was to remove some people and switch them out. So I'm going to ride this and see what happens. And Dad, for your team, what are you thinking what you see is actually a Sonoda on my team. He was gaining sentiment, so that's good. I might switch him back out, though, and get Gasly back. I doubt Gasly is going to not give me points two weeks in a row. Well, uh, what are you thinking? I'm not planning on making any changes. I've maxed out my budget, and unless I do some day trading race weekend, I think I'm just mm. going to stay put. Your team looks very similar to my team lineup. So I did pick up Sonoda for the day trading side of things. If they do as strong in the second race as this one, maybe just keep both of them. As the season progresses, we're getting more and more of the Fab Five. It's very hard to not pick certain drivers because of their point output and their value. So I actually have a long-term plan. It seems like dad is always just one good pick away from getting on the podium. So my plan is to eventually have his team and then whatever he says is going to be the fifth driver between two, I'm just going to pick the opposite one. doesn't matter. Whichever one he picks, I'll pick the opposite one and then I'll end up on the podium and he cannot be on the podium. Why, thank you, son. That's so optimistic. Your insights are useful. Learn from your parents' mistakes, they say. <laughs> oh. yes some wisdom dropping bombs uh, too bad i'll take you a while to get there son oh okay wow yeah. wow wow you know we're getting tired when we get wired okay let's go over <laughs> to our league drd dad was the defending king from the previous week even though they weren't going to be awarding points and stuff this was just to try things out turboing ricardo 
Dud. But you were able to win the court race. How did you feel with a combination of Leclerc and Schumacher getting you 29 points? Ooh, I really liked it. I knew after we revealed last week, I had no chance really for the Kings race. So I like a consolation point. Donick picked up Botas, rode him with a turbo. And for those of you at home, League DRD is not designed to have any sort of monetary value. How they finished the previous race is then the draft order that we will then pick from for the next race. We also have floors and ceilings. A driver that gets negative points? No, it just caps down at zero. And then if they get over 30, they cap up at 30 points. And so that's why Botas would get 60 points. Bro, how did you feel being able to ride Botas to victory? Look, the real story here is that I didn't lose to Paola. That's the real story. <laughs> you realize? No, real talk. We all had made comments that she passed up on Botas for signs, but if Gasly had finished that race in even remotely a close position than he qualified, chances are she would have taken this one. If I remember correctly, Paolo, that was your strategy, right? Get a more middle tier driver so you could get too strong middle tier. It would have paid off if Gasly didn't have his wreck. That was my strategy, and I put all my eggs to the King's Race basket, if mm. you will. If it hadn't been for that ghastly truck of luck, I think, yeah, I would have had it. I definitely got lucky, but as usual, I am also greedy. Boo on you for taking the other point away from me. <laughs> yeah, let's kick this over to our Google Sheet. We are doing something new for this second half of the season, and this allows you to now do it at home. From here on out, we will actually leave the DRD manager available on our Google Sheet so you can see your, the draft position. On the left-hand side, you have a driver, and when you pick him, then you will then cross-reference with the vertical column. So for example, if you pick up Botas, Botas's column is AJ, which means that the next driver you draft has to be from his column. That means you only have the options of Mazepin, Russell, or Gasly. So if you pick a driver that ends up finishing high, then that means the next driver has to be low. But if you pick a driver that's low, then that means he has more options for the next pick. Everyone who's yellow are what you call wild cards. They are drivers that have an average over the course of the season of over 21 points. Botox seems a little bit unfair, but he had a couple races where he didn't score points or as high as he should have, and that's why he seems to be a steal. What we're starting now is what we're going to call head to head, and this is why I wanted to explain these rules to you. We're going to leave this up on the spreadsheet so that you can play this with another person, League DRD. Head to head means that we're going to pair off each week, and those people will go through the same draft system like we were doing before with three people. It's just now down to two. And I will be able to keep track because I have a new thing that I've added to the spreadsheet so that it keeps the colors in the right place. Going into this race, it sounds like Dominic and Dad, you're going to pair up first. Is that correct? Sure, why not? So, Maybe I'll go Dad, first. draft first. Who are you going to pick up? I'll take Botas. What? Okay, and Dominic, who are you going to pick? Oh, I get two in a row. Mm -hmm. Well, then I will pick up Gasly. And for my, well, oh, no, 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 backpack, backtrack. Because I get to do two in a row, why would I not start with the higher tier and then pick up Gasly second? Okay, well, I'm going to go with Leclerc then. And then I'm going to go with Gasly as my next. Dad, you've got Mazepin and Russell. Even though Russell broke my heart this week, I'll pick him up on my okay. ERD league. Okay. So... I have to go ahead and go with signs. He's more a good, consistent driver, even though he doesn't usually score as high as Leclerc. Okay. And then finally for me, Hmm. You get to pick I, two more. So I'm going to probably go with... Latifi. No. Latifi. No, no, I don't want to hear it. Latifi. You could pick up Latifi when it's your turn to pick, <laughs> but no, I don't want to hear that. Hmm. How many points does Stroll get this last race? It says it under the R column, so 16. Oh, right, right, right. You know, I'm going to go with him. And then, finally, I will go with the, 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 the Schumacher. Okay, that leaves one last guy for you to pick. So I have to go down. The, oh, looks so like... you got Giovinazzi, Latifi, Mesbin. Latifi. 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 It's huh. okay when I'm not picking. You can cheer all you want. Since Giovinazzi usually scores higher than Latifi, I'll go ahead and get Giovinazzi. Okay, so now that we've got the first two teams all chosen up, it's time for Match John Mark and two. Paola. Well, Paola, you get to pick first. Let me put my faith back in Leclerc. I'll do Leclerc. Man, what big brain strat. Because I almost feel like I have to pick Botas. Yep. Yeah, they can have Russell like me. Why would you not pick up Botas? <laughs> okay, I'll pick up Botas. I'll pick up Gasly well, then. Well. Alright, Paula. You get two. I suppose Russell. I kind of cornered myself into 
potentially going full on Ferrari. I think I'll go with signs. And now, John Mark, two for you. Okay, so I just picked Gasly. So, do I dare pick up Ricardo? Yes. Do it. What would Ricardo do? Do the <laughs> biggest thing. That is more consistent, though. Every other week, Ricardo's good. One week, he's not. Oh, the next week. Sorry. So, this I'll should be up, easy. I'll pick up Schumacher. Paolo, who is your fourth and final? It's from Signs' column. La T P. La T P. La T P. She's actually picking. Okay, let's do it. Woo woo woo. Boy, it's she. Really I'm doing Ferrari Williams. Okay, yeah. this now brings us to our main page. We're going to put this under the race in the Discord, and we'll start off with Dad and Dominic. So you guys are going to type in who you're putting your Kings race and who you're putting your court race. There are no credits to spend for this first race. I'm ready. Okay, Dad and Dominic, three, two, one, reveal. Oh my, this is going to be rough. Botas and Signs in the Kings race, and then Gion Russell in the court race. Yeah. And then for Dominic, he's got Leclerc and Gasly, and Stroll and Mick Schumacher. Yeah. And Mick Money. Okay, That's... you ready, Paula? Three, two, not... one, reveal. Paula has Signs. Oh, she's going. <laughs> that makes sense, actually. Put the Ferraris together in the Kings race, put the Williams together in the court race. I should have saw that one coming. I don't know why I didn't think about that. Because <laughs> I think Leclerc's pace and his driving this past week was so good. I'm like, I think he's going to keep that up. And then I, I thought of putting him with Russell and then kind of eating them out. But Hey, bro, what'd you do? I put Botas and Gasly in the Kings race, Stroll and Schumacher in the court race. I think this style is going to be interesting because we're not going to be fighting over the court race as much as in the past because we used to fight over the court race to win something and save up some credits to then to challenge the king race. But now with the king's race being challenged every week, I think people are going to just go after the king's race more. If you are interested in joining in on the League DRD fun, you can go to the comments. Just like we did, pick four drivers using the same system, then put two in the Kings, two in the Courts, and we will give you the ability to turbo one of those four drivers every week. And how it will work is we will pick one of those comments at random, and then we will compare the results of your Kings and your Court race to all of ours, and we will see how you do. If you're interested in doing that, go ahead and leave that comment. Maybe get a shout out. And you might have an unfair advantage this week if you're able to turbo and we can't. should take advantage of that if you can. And there you have it. What an amazing podcast. It's so great to have my family over visiting the Northwoods of Wisconsin. It's so great to be back after two long weeks of being gone. And until next time, we have been your knights in shining armor. Have a good one. Bye. <laughs>